Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose great mercy gave us a new birth into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The inheritance to which we are born is one that nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. We gather this morning to worship Almighty God to bear witness to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to give thanks to Almighty God for the life of our loved one, friend, neighbor, and brother in the faith, Worth Browning Wilson. As we worship God this morning and remember Worth with love and deep appreciation, hear these words of hope and promise from the Apostle Paul. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us worship God. I invite you, if you are able, to stand and join in singing hymn number 840, It Is Well With My Soul.
please be seated. Let us pray. God of grace in Jesus Christ, you have given us a new and living hope. We thank you that by dying, Christ has conquered death, and that by rising again, he promises eternal life. Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also. Help us to live trusting in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life eternal. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all the days of our life through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. Especially we thank you today for Worth, whom you have now received into your presence. As we gather today to worship you, to remember Worth, and give thanks for his life, and commend him to your everlasting love and care. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Eternal God, our refuge and strength, our present help in trouble. Give us such trust in you that holding on to your word, we may be strong in this in every time of need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you to listen for God's word from the Old Testament to begin with, words from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I invite you to join me, if you would, in reciting Psalm 23. It's printed on the back of the bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
again, I invite you to listen for God's word from the New Testament. First, the selection from John 11, the story of when Lazarus died. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb already four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, if indeed when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And finally, some more words from Paul to the Philippian Christians. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. He was a good man. He was just a good man. That's what Pat told me about Worth on Sunday afternoon as we visited in their apartment at Cambridge Village in Wilmington. And that's quite a tribute from a spouse of 70 years. Of course, I already knew that about Worth Wilson because that's what everybody else has said. Everyone who knew Worth can appreciate the words in his obituary that Worth was respected for his consistent work ethic, his integrity, his common sense, and his leadership. As an exemplary husband and father, he considered his marriage and family as his greatest source of pride. Those of us in the Wallace Presbyterian Church who were blessed to know Worth knew him for approximately one quarter of his long life. And our church family benefited greatly when Pat and Worth moved to River Landing from Raleigh. They both invested themselves fully in the life of our congregation's worship and service, especially as they assumed leadership of our Helping Hands Food Pantry and organized and enlarged and strengthened its ministry in the community. Worth faithfully served God's people here as a ruling elder in which he also shared that same integrity, common sense, and leadership. We were all sad when Worth and Pat moved to Wilmington, but happy for them that they had found a place that was good for them to be. And they both reminded me on several occasions that Wallace Presbyterian was still their church. And I was quick to assure them that Wallace Presbyterian still claimed them, and we still claim you. <laughs> During these summer months here at this church, we've been hearing from God's word week in and week out 
about what it means to live out God's calling in our everyday lives, we have consistently heard that God's claim on our life does not help us escape the realities of this life on earth. Rather, God's claim on our lives both sees us through the ups and downs of life and empowers us to fulfill our calling to do God's work in the present, even as we maintain our hope for God's promised future. Psalm 90 verse 10 tells us the days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Worth exceeded that lifespan estimate by 10, almost 11 years. And certainly in his many years, he experienced his share of toil and trouble. However, when you were around Worth, and every one of you knows what I'm talking about, you instinctively knew how much he enjoyed life and everything he had experienced in it. And that's why I selected the Old Testament reading from Ecclesiastes 3, for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. For it seemed fitting as we celebrate and acknowledge Worth's long, faithful, and rich life. Some people hear Ecclesiastes 3 with its back and forth rhythm as a pessimistic description of life. There's nothing new under the sun, the same old, same old. But it's actually a realistic picture of life under the sovereign rule of God. A few, year, a few verses later, the, the preacher affirms, I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. Knowing Worth's humble nature, he would surely be uncomfortable if he thought we were exalting him today beyond reason. But that's not the purpose of our gathering today. Rather, we gather to celebrate and give thanks for a life well lived, a life that truly blessed us all, a life that was a gift, not only to Worth, but to all of us who shared it throughout his 90, almost 91 years. Last Sunday and tomorrow, we are hearing from the letter to the Hebrews about the heroes and heroines of the faith, those people often referred to as saints. But when you look at each of their lives, you quickly realize that not a one of them was perfect, and yet God worked in and through their lives and use them when and where he needed them. There's a delightful hymn in our hymnal called, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God, which talks about ordinary people who loved their God. And it says, I sing a song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true, who toiled and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. They were all of them saints of God, and I mean God helping to be one too. And the final words of the hymn are, for the saints of God are just folk like me, and I mean to be one too. Those words and thinking about Worth's life were the inspiration for selecting the final New Testament lesson from Philippians 4. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things and keep on doing these things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. It's that faithfulness, that perseverance, that dedication, integrity, and love, day in and day out, that makes a difference and counts in life. It, yes, it counts in your own life, but most definitely in the lives and for the benefit of the people around you. And that's why we celebrate Worth Wilson's life today and think about the legacy that he leaves. 
as an excellent two-way football player for the Presbyterian College Blue Hose, one of my favorite mascots, the Blue Hose of Presbyterian College. Worth was definitely familiar with the discipline and the hard work and the perseverance and the focus required to reach a goal. And the qualities he developed as a college student stuck with him throughout his whole long life. So I imagine Worth would appreciate how our life journey as believers is sometimes described with athletic imagery. Tomorrow in worship, we're gonna hear these words from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The Apostle Paul wrote, not that I have already obtained the resurrection of the dead, or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus ran the race before us and for us, because we walk by faith and not by sight, because we can strain forward to what lies ahead, because of the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. We can thank God for what he has done for us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And despite our sadness at Worth's death, we can celebrate his long, faithful, and fruitful life. As the Apostle Paul neared the end of his ministry and the end of his life, he wrote these words to Timothy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. We can surely say the same thing about Worth Wilson today as we commend him to God's merciful care in the faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank, thank you for joining us today to celebrate the life of my father, Worth Browning Wilson, who was a loving husband for over 70 years, as Phil said, an exemplary father, as I can attest, and the best friend you could ever have. We lost dad a week ago today. During his final days, we were blessed to work with many kind and caring people, people we didn't know, and, we, and who just came out and were so kind. We didn't know what we didn't know, and the sisters we received was amazing and so greatly appreciated. We're grateful to the caregivers and support staff whose work allowed my dad to die with the dignity and respect he so richly deserved. Specifically, I want to express our appreciation and gratitude to the exceptional individuals and teams, the nurses and phys physicians at New Hanover Hospital, the wonderful staff at Lower Cape Fear Life Care Hospice, Phil, who's been a source of comfort and reassurance to my dad and mom for many years. Especially thanks to the Presbyterian women, church, women of the church, and the congregation for your Down East hospitality. I have one special thank you to deliver. If you want to see an angel, we have one with us today. Throughout his illness, my sister Lynn was an dad's advocate and guardian and mom's source of strength. She's been countless hours taking care of mom and dad and keeping their affairs in order and communicating the doctor's instructions to us, which is sometimes not, taken, not understood anyway. Lynn, you've been the bedrock of our family. You were God sent to mom and dad when they needed it most. Thank you for everything and God bless you and Mike. And finally, thanks to each of you who are with us today. You honor us with your presence and most of all, you honor my dad for a life well lived. Thank you. So let me tell you about my dad. Phil gave me some insight, but I was there the whole time, the, most of it. He grew up in Charlotte as the youngest of five children. There were four boys and a girl. 
He was an outstanding athlete at Harding High School, he under, earning a scholarship, full of scholarship offers from Appalachian State and Presbyterian College in South Carolina. He chose Presbyterian where in late 1951 he met Patsy Garner on a blind date at Limestone College. Things were never the same. They met in late 1951. They were married in March of 1952, and I was born in December of 1952. You do the math. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, when I was born, Dad was 21 and Mom was 20. My sister Lynn Lott arrived in March of 1955. I highlight those dates because with such young parents, Lynn and I were fortunate enough to know Mom as young, young adults, middle-aged achievers, and now as elderly parents. Unfortunately, if you live 70 years, they see you the same way. I, I, want, I want to clarify, I am Dad's son, not his brother, as a couple of people have asked today. <laughs> uh, a, 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 a eulogy is a period of remembrance. Lynn and Mom and I sat around for a while and talked about things we thought last about Dad, the good stories, the humor stories, and endearing stories. We found that the smaller memories were the most, most poignant and memorable, not the milestones. In one sense, I, I had to strive Dad, in one sense, I was calling him a, a, caring, a kind, frugal, hardworking, self-effacing gentleman who suffered no fools, possessed a limited amount of patience, and had an adversary relationship with TV remote controls and computer passwords. <laughs> Here are a few stories. I want to give you a few stories told with love and minor embellishment to help us illustrate what I'm saying. Dad was frugal. We, we, we didn't have a lot of money, but we always thought we did because if we asked for something, eventually maybe we could get it. Maybe not what we wanted. I wanted a, a banana bite. He would never buy that. Um, he bought a 26 inch bike when I was first, second grade, and, I, and he said, you'll grow into it. <laughs> In the meantime, what I was supposed to do, he put wooden blocks on the pedals. And, uh, so I, I'm trying to pedal this thing, and he's running behind me. And finally, finally, I grew into it. <laughs> Who remembers <clears throat> avocado appliances and copper tone, copper stuff? Yeah, everybody does. Hot in the 60s, right? Uh, we had an old Frigidaire refrigerator with the rounded corners, and a big chrome handle that you pull up. Whoa, you meant to do that. <laughs> you pull it open the door. Well, we always wanted to update everything. We couldn't get a new refrigerator, so they, he had the one painted brown. <laughs> yeah. um, his clothing, he, he, I believe the last t 10 years of his life, he may have spent $17 on his clothing. Uh, he, he, he's careful with a dollar. He, he had the only two. Arnold Palmer signature cardigan alpaca sweaters that left on the East Coast, I think. Boy, that. Um, are there any law enforcement or cable vision people here today? <laughs> when they brought cable vision to River Landing, they came to install it, two guys. <clears throat> and one of them went around the front to, to get the equipment, and the, and the, uh, Julio, the, the older guy asked Dad, to stay. he said, do you want to, uh, Mr. Wilson said, do you want all the channels? <clears throat> She said, Dad said, yeah, we want to get a movie channel. He went, no. You want to get all the channels. And they made him a chip and took the two chip out of it and put the new one in. He, we got everything, prize fights, everything. And he said, Dad, I was watching. Dad said, stay out of the 500s. <laughs> and they kept, they kept pulsing the chip. And, and so he couldn't get any TV, so he kept taking chip out. And he, said, he was meeting the guy in the parking lot of the Hardys. To exchange ships, and mom finds stuff. I said, We can't keep doing this. <laughs> I said, they, see, they called and used the ultimate excuse. They said, I'm a senior citizen. I don't know where the chip goes. So they sent her a new one. We put that one in. And there, that was the end of the cable, if you ask that. <laughs> he had a Holland grill. Remember that? Cooked by time. Same standard temperature, he cooked it by time. But he got impatient because it cooks too slowly. So I go in there, he's got lumen full of jammed in all the chimneys. And so you could cook faster. So, well, that's the, not the purpose of the whole grill. But he he, he do that a lot. Uh, his truck he had, I got in it one day to, to borrow it. <clears throat> no bass in the music. The, ten, the tr treble is turned all the way up, and it's only coming out of one speaker in the back. He had, uh, he had no t music. We asked him what was his favorite song. He didn't have one. 
Um, everything I ever did in school in Lynn, he attended sporting events. Uh, he, he was there. Dad was a great athlete. He never, but he never pushed me. I wasn't a great athlete, but he was there. He was at participation. I remember playing <clears throat> little league baseball in North Hills Park in Raleigh, and uh, playing first base. And I caught a grounder, and caught it, and made a good play on it. Picked it up, ran, step, stepped on the foot bag, put the guy out, turned around, and the ball is spinning in the dirt. <laughs> I had my web had turned into my glove, and we had a rain delay, and we were up under the shelter. And Dad, as a young man, was was pretty well put together. He's a big, big guy. And we, the guy behind us was laughing about the first baseman for the North Hills Cleaners team that had left the ball in the dirt. And Dad stepped back, looked at him, and he went, <clears throat> That's my son. He didn't say it like, That's my son, I'm proud of him. He says, That's my son, I'm going to take your head off if you say anything else. <laughs> and I went, Oh, that was a good play, I guess. Um, I, as Phil said, Dad was a very humble man. And he, uh, to, almost to a fault. He would step in the back. He didn't want to send me to send attention. And he didn't express his feelings until late in life. I, I had the surgery for cancer. And I was on the gurney. I remember Dad coming to talk to me and saying, uh, you know, do you, do you do okay, bud? Go, go, go. He wanted to say, I love you. And I wanted to say, I love you. And we went, okay. <laughs> But later in life, and I'll tell you, uh, you appreciate the story. Um, we closed the loop. The last couple of years of his life, I never left him without him knowing I loved him. And then I, so if I never saw him again, I could feel like the loop had been closed. And he told me he loved me and he was proud of me. I meant everything. But I saw that with other people who, um, Hurricane Floyd hit. I, we moved furniture out of the house, we wanted our rooms to go. We were, we were t t uh, flooding and everything. And um, it was Dad's 65th birthday. And we were working and it was hot and sweaty. And, and I looked over and Dad was sitting on the back of a pickup truck. And they brought him a cake. And he started to cry. I started to cry. You tell that people loved him and people were, were so fond of him. And this church was such a, uh, was a perfect example. And so many of you are here today from River Landing. Uh, he, was, he was just a great guy. And one of the last things we, he, we told him before he died, he's going to be a great grandfather. And uh, so glad he got to know that. Um, some folks in the family didn't know that yet. <laughs> uh, thank you for not gasping. Um, Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day that you find out why. I believe Dad found out why early in life and he never lost sight of his vision. That is to take care of his four and protect his family and leave them in a better place than he left us. He did. Dad, you did a great job. Thank you. We love you. And we'll see you again. So, Stephen, can you help me out here? Yes. Dad's grandson, Stephen Greenwood. All right, good morning. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, in a time that you know the family could use some lifting up, it's really special to have everybody come out and support us. So really appreciate that, thank you. Um, tough act to follow, uh, thank you. Uh, I call him Brownie. Uh, we're a family of nicknames, um, but uh, thank you for those words. Um, Thank you to the staff at the church here. Uh, I know this is a special place uh, for my grandparents, and uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that they've had this community over the years uh, and have had the support as they moved to Wilmington. Um, 
today is a, is a tough day, but it's a, it's a happy day too, because we get to honor Worth. Uh, I know him as Spanky. Uh, <laughs> and growing up, having a, a grandparent that you called a little rascal's character was interesting to navigate, because there's always a story to tell of why. Uh, I'll leave that lore to, to the family, uh, but I'll refer to him as uh, Spanky today, if that's okay. Um, so one of the things that really sticks out to me about Spanky's legacy uh, is how he made space for people. And when you think of space, it's not necessarily always a physical space, a square in the room. It's an emotional space, a space where you can show up and be yourself. And as I see people join today, uh, and you know how you lit up when you saw me, is confirmation that he made that space uh, in his life for you too. And it's really nice to, to see that. Um, growing up, uh, one of my earliest and fondest memories is visiting Spanky and Grandma at Car Lake, uh, where they had a little trailer that was in a circle with a few other trailers uh, in a very vibrant community. And uh, Spanky had a pontoon boat, uh, which if you think of pontoon boats, they're not the coolest boats. They look like somebody's back deck that floats in water. Uh, but once you start to uh, think about that, you realize that it's a space for people. It's a space for community. And the memories I have of taking that boat out on the water, jumping off the top, tying up with friends, people going by and waving at Spanky, waving at Grandma, and seeing their face light up, it's really special. Uh, another story that sticks out to me is as I grew older and was old enough to tag along with my parents as they were shopping for cars, uh, I think about uh, Spanky and his really long and successful career at Ford Motor Credit. And uh, we all know dealerships can be a tricky place to, to navigate um, and that they're uh, not always the friendliest. Uh, but when the staff at whatever dealership we were at found out that my mom, Lynn, was Worf's daughter, it was like we were old friends. And I think about why. And it's clear, even in his career, he made space for people. And I think that's really uh, an indication of how he was consistent in all spaces of his life to make spaces for other people. Um, I think, you know, lastly, uh, a story that I'll share is uh, the house at River Landing over in Candlewood. Some of you know that place well. Uh, I think about how the house was laid out and there was uh, a living room that always had a little bit extra seating in it. And it, it was a little cumbersome to, to navigate, uh, but it was intentional that there was space for friends, there was space for community. There was a sun deck in the back, very similar, maybe a little bit too much furniture, but there was space for neighbors. And as we visit for holidays and moments uh, in our life, milestones, it was, uh, all the regular for somebody from the neighborhood to stop by. And uh, we sat and had some memories that we shared uh, a few nights ago with, with Grandma. And she was like, oh, people were stopping by all the time. And uh, I just think about how meaningful that was and how truly Spanky was a pillar of every community he was a part of. And uh, I'm thankful that I got to experience that. and. Uh, as I wrap up here today, I think of how we can honor his legacy. And it's clear that making space for people was so important to him, and I think that's the perfect way we can honor him, is as we leave here today and continue on with our lives, that we try to make a little bit more space for each other. Thank you. Brownie. Thank you, Stephen. Um, let us pray together. Almighty God, our Creator and Redeemer, you are our strength and our hope. You have given us worth to know and to love in our pilgrimage on earth. Uphold us now as we entrust him to your boundless love and eternal care. Assure us that not even death can separate us from your infinite mercy. 
Comfort us in our sorrow that we may know your sure consolation and live in confident hope of the resurrection through your Son, Christ our Lord. We praise you for the gift of worth's life, for all in him that was good and kind and faithful, for the graceful spirit you gave him, which he shared with all of us. Although we miss him dearly, we thank you that for worth death is past and pain is ended, and he has now entered the joy you have prepared for him. Loving God, we thank you for Worth's deep devotion to Pat in their 70 years of marriage, for his love of his family and friends, for his friendliness and gentle manner that endeared him to all of us, for his quiet manner that displayed his integrity, his common sense and leadership. Lord, we have been blessed to have Worth Wilson in our lives and we bless you for sharing him with us. We pray for all of Worth's family and many friends. May we all find peace in the knowledge of your loving mercy to all your children. Give us light to guide us into the assurance of your love. Enable us to be grateful for the ties that continue to bind us to Worth. Renew our strength each day to seek your will and lean upon your mercy. Keep us ever in the communion of saints and in the promise of life eternal through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's good to affirm what we believe at any time, but especially at times such as this. I invite you, if you're able, to stand and join in affirming our faith with the historic affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Would you please join me? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your spirit, Worth Browning Wilson. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Lord, receive worth into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen.